Yeah, kia ora whanau, hey, Srewai here, we're back at uh, Papatungu Kōkiri Marae um, with uh, Val and Lionel and their whanau in regards to their marakai and we're now looking at um, the compost uh, process in regards to no waste and uh, sustainability um, so he's going, Lionel's going to have a chat to us about that um, if you are wanting to help out the whanau here uh, just make contact with uh, Fire Val and arrange a time where you can come down and volunteer. They're always looking for volunteers to help out, um, whether it's uh, helping with the weeds, planting in the nursery. Uh, if you've got a if you've got a Saturday morning or if you've got a group, they're going just just make contact with uh, the Marae and um, they they will they'll slot you in and really appreciate your support. So Lionel, we're here now at the compost, which is I've learned a new word about compost is wai. Purako. Yes. So a new kupu for me, and so someone who knows yeah. te reo, particularly traditional ones, if they know what uh, that uh, the kōreo behind that, that'd be awesome to know. <laughs> uh, but can you tell us uh, about uh, your kaupapa in regards to the no waste uh, kaupapa, yeah. um, and how the compost process uh, works, and how does it, what's the cycle of it, it's part of a system yeah. of garden management. Yeah. Uh, so the, the compost or the wai purako, Kopapa is aligns to our Te Ao Tūroa Kopapa of the long standing world and it talks a little bit about regenerating the soil and giving back to the soil and adding the modi to the soil and that comes through uh, this compost bin also comes through a chop and drop sort of method we have outside but um, this also talks a little bit about the food waste and um, some of the waste minimisation programs that we run, initiatives that we run here so yeah, yeah. Part of the Marae's biggest uh, waste stream is food, yep. uh, so it makes sense for us to be able to turn that into some valuable compost and it starts with this carbon compost bin, so it's a little, it's a little bit, it's, it's not for the faint hearted, it's got a lot of funky stuff in here and a, ooh, a lot of living, living matter, organisms, I need to add some other oh, stuff. Look at that. Another indicator that there's too much nitrogen in there, those, uh, those little bugs in there, because they can't survive too much without, uh, they can't survive too much with carbon, that's why we're adding, that's why we got this pile of um, wood chip here, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, to really balance it out, because if you have too much nitrogen, then it becomes putrid, yeah, yeah, and then you're just getting too much acid and it doesn't, it's not, um, what do you call it, anaerobic key. You're not getting the right uh, heat temperature in there for it to break down. So too much nitrogen can make it a little too much um, unwanted uh, pests in there. Yeah. So yeah, trying to find that balance, that's the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But we pick up um, about 80 kilos of um, apples and pears that come from Turners and Growers free lunch program at the school, South Auckland School. So yep. we've got a, a relationship with two schools. Uh, the Fare Kura Mangere, Kura Kopapo Arohe o Mangere, and um, Kori School, where Val's the chairman here. So we, we go down there once a week, both schools and pick up there, bring it here, and it turns into some of the good compost that goes into our garden. Okay. So, under the right conditions, yes. do you rotate these bays? or do yes. they? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, because well, they all break down. It yep. breaks down. Yep. So, all mm -hmm. these, you can lift this up. Yep. All this will lift up, yep. and then what we do is chuck it in all, all on the other side. And that's the idea of these stickers, they're, they're pest free. Because the pest can't get in it. Yeah. And then we switch from, take about, depending on what you got in there, depending on how good your mixture is, you move it from number one to number two, start again in number two, number three, and then hopefully number four, we can take the home and put it straight into the wheelbarrow, straight out into the garden. Yeah, so here's the rotation there. A little bit of it, yeah. Yep. And how yep. how long will each item stay in, in a particular yeah. bay? Well, if you can get it, if you can get it right, close to three to four weeks, easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah not this three month, yeah. four month. Um, yeah, if you can get it right, put your temperature gauge in. It's good to have your temperature gauge. Yes. See how hot it is, and then that'll give you the measure of whether or not you're getting the right temperature. Yeah. Is there anything that you don't put in here? So I've heard, for example, that you don't necessarily put weeds in that have got seeds on it. Yes, uh, that's correct. Yep. Whereas that's others have said you can because if you've got the temperature right, it'll kill the seeds off. Kill the seeds off. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what do you do here for, for South Auckland conditions? Because uh, most of it's just uh, our 
tree clippings, which yes. is the mulch, yep. and the other part of it is our um, fruits and vegetables. So, yeah, there's not too many weeds we do put in there, um, but if it is going in there, most most of the, the weeds that we do have is an open compost, but our kaikuya goes into um, water, goes into oh, yeah. a water bay. Yeah. yeah, but most of our um, weeds or unwanted plants go into an open compost and just yeah. pile it up like we do our lasagna mix out there. Yeah, yeah. But this one is specifically for the fruits and oh, for the um, school initiative. Yeah. That's how we got the funding to get these. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so specifically, but yeah, no harm in getting our some of this other stuff. But like you see, it's a bit of a risk. Yeah will grow, bending, but yeah. uh, wait, this funky thing is, man. Except <laughs> yeah. for flies. Yeah. <laughs> Fly so, farm. Um, so the, the whanau at the moment from Ngā Pau are uh, doing some weeding or they're actually taking out some of the um, uh, hua whenua that have seeded. You've taken the seeds off. What will you do with the live green leaves of those? Will you put them into something like this or will they go into an open? Yeah, it de depends. What's it? If we, we don't have enough greens, then we'll put put some in there, yep. but most of it will go up to the top because we um, yeah, we, we do this biodynamics cover, it looks like a, um, it's hard to oh, say, yeah, 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 yeah. they cover it in mud and <laughs> we did a few, few of those, a um, couple of them and they had these little um, different ting tinctures of different plants oh, yeah. to activate the compost. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah biodynamics, but we, that's the idea of this open compost is have all like that, chop it up. Yep. The smaller it is, the faster it'll break up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to get a chipper in there. Good to put it through the chipper if it gets dry. Yeah. Boom, sand. Yeah. So that'll, you know, shorten the time of um, the turnaround yep. before you can use it. Nora Fano, there is a real flash. <laughs> um, compost bins, real flash ones. Um, so that just gives you a bit of an idea, uh, think about how you can do it with your food waste, um, your vegetable waste, um, maybe hooking up with some local schools uh, or the restaurants and say we can deal with it, obviously it's not meat or anything like that, um, but yeah, tapai, alright. Awesome.